Christians to be deceived. We don't want anyone in this room to be deceived. The Bible says in the last days, men will be lovers of themselves. Narcissists. Pretty narcissistic world out there now, wouldn't you say? So today's uh, portion, I think they call it on that the I am generation. On here it says the last days self-absorbed generation. And just talks about what we're seeing right now. A generation that is so filled with entitlement and so filled with wanting to get their rights in their way that I think in this season that we're going to see such a dichotomy of them versus the church of Jesus Christ pouring out. Taken in, pouring out. Isn't that the whole story of Jesus? He came to do what? Lay down his life to give himself as a ransom for others? That's the whole message of the church. As they're grabbing for more, we're trusting and resting in him, hearing his voice, moving as he tells us to move. And, and we're like, you know, the magoos of this world that just keep looking at God and doesn't matter what's going on around us, we just keep prospering and getting blessed and being a blessing. And so Rick's going to talk a little bit about this end-time generation that is so selfish, so selfish and self-absorbed that they can't see past their own need. And I don't know if you've noticed a lot of the things coming out in the news that a lot of these um, people are marching through the streets, totally covered, gloves on, hats on, masks on, are white children of privilege that have gotten everything they've ever wanted, and now they hate America. Amen? It's crazy, isn't it? It's a crazy world. So let's... Um, we're going to look at uh, this week's uh, week two of last day's um, survival guide, and Bruce is going to put it up on the uh, YouTube video, the link that anybody would want to see this on. So just look for the link in the, in the video. Amen? So guys, take it away. but not on our time. Amen? So anyway, it's great. Uh, this book is really compelling. It's really good. If you haven't got it, you have the PDF that I sent you anyway. But what do you think about that, huh? Obvious thoughts? Any thoughts before I say anything? Well, you know, um, this book was written, uh, this part of scripture was written to who? Third Timothy. Got a thought? Come here. I gotta have you on vi on video, I mean on uh, microphone. You're not gonna like what I'm gonna say. Ooh, what are you gonna say? Um, I think that selfies and social media are just feeding this whole idea, and this is the first generation, and it's just gonna keep getting worse and worse and worse. It's all about me. Look at me. I, can I do the next craziest thing to make you look at me and download me and follow me and all this stuff? But that was just a thought. As soon as he's saying self-absorbed, I can see it coming nationally, worldwide, because of social media and self-directed people. You know, it's interesting because um, if you watch anything on the news, what do you see prominently at all these riots? Cell phones held up, videoing everything that takes place. You know? So it's true. It's like, how many likes do I get? But Society has always been going off, amen? Men have, we have a sin nature. And if it's not, um, if we're not reconciled to God, it just gets worse and worse. And so generation after generation, there are times when we see a whole civilization collapse. Because if not, it, it will just destroy itself anyway and destroy the whole world. And so we're at a time now, where we're at the end of the time where I believe the Lord's just going to let it play out. He's going to let it play out. But we're not to be fearful, right? We're to be prepared. And as the evil rises up, the church should be rising up in power. Uh, he was saying in this that it was written to Timothy. Remember Timothy? Young Timothy? Young Timothy raised up as a child from his mother and his grandmother, amen? Amen. And then he gets, what, Ephesus as one of his places where he's pastoring? 
Ephesus, I mean, really, it was a center of so much. If you look up Ephesus, you will see that there were great libraries, there were great temples, there were a lot of things that they worshipped. And um, there was a great open-ear theater, which was probably one of the biggest in Asia Minor. And in that theater, there were a 25,000 seat capacity, and they had um, dramas and comedies. In those days, the men played all parts, dressed as women, and they did these comedies, and they did these Greek tragedies. But they also began with the gladiators, and that became like, more bloodthirsty, amen? And so this is where God blessed Timothy, where there were so many gods, false gods, that were, that were uh, worshipped at his church, amen? And so the Bible tells us that... Um, Paul wanted to strengthen him. And so that's what God comes to do in the word. He strengthens us. But it says, men shall be lovers of their own selves, and society will tilt as a result. We, I, it looks like the whole earth is like on tilt right now. It's the whole earth that has uh, been totally overtaken by uh, disease, this COVID thing, fear, and Selfishness, you know, when, when, when things, uh, let me, let's just talk about toilet paper at the beginning of all this, right? When things are scarce, people hoard. If there's meat becomes scarce, what are they going to do? They're going to hoard. We know that, right? In the beginning of COVID, you couldn't find a box of pasta on the shelves. That's the nature of unregenerated man. I need to have this. Me, 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 me. And we see little bits here and there. Amen? Um, Self-centered, self-focused, self-absorbed, inordinate self-love. This is not how God created us to be. We're to love our neighbors as ourselves, but we're not to be so consumed with our own needs that we don't care about anyone else, that we don't hear anyone else, that we don't care about anyone else's differences or opinions on anything. And I feel like Holy Spirit is just brooding over the whole earth. And we're going to see that this will be a time when the prayers of the saints will be answered. I do believe that. You know, I started to say last week when Eileen was here, she came up after and and, uh, she said, "I, I feel like the Lord's given me a word for you. And I turned on my recorder and just received it. Amen. And she spoke to me for like 10 minutes, but the gist of it for our church is to understand that she saw people coming to us. They're not necessarily going to all walk into this church, but people coming to us, seeking us out, who maybe were in church as children and have backslid and are looking for answers and are needing help with things. And she said the difference that they will find here is not just answers, but an acceptance. Um... And she said, I just saw you, Diane. You were putting these white garments on everyone, pulling off, just, you know, taking the shame away and taking the reproach of sin away. And um, I said, God, just prepare our hearts for this. Prepare our hearts for this. We pray for backsliders. Prepare our hearts for them. Amen? Prepare our hearts for those who are coming off the streets who are not like us. And, 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 and let's believe God for miracles of transformation for them. But he's saying that The whole world is going off balance, and people are going to be looking for answers. Amen? It says here that for us, we must keep our affection on the Lord, that he must always be the first love. Amen? And then we look to others. As we maintain a servant's heart towards God and those he's placed around us, we will be protected from the infection of narcissism of the self-consumed mindset that is going viral in these last days. Amen? Entertainment was big in Ephesus, and entertainment is big now. And if you've watched and, and looked at things in this last 20 years, maybe 30 years, you just watch people, publishers and directors and producers, You just see them just cross the line and then cross the line a little bit more, you know? They just keep moving over that line of indecency and disgustingness and and everything that 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 
opposes the truth of the word of the Lord. Everything that opposes the values that we hold dear, they just keep moving over and moving over and moving over till it's more and more and more. And it's like that frog in the kettle. It happens so slowly. It happens so, yes, yeah, subtly, that people just are duped until it's totally consuming and everyone thinks it's okay. And you saw this week Netflix is putting on a disgusting show this season. Disgusting show. Taking preteens, little kids, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, and just showing them disgusting things and, and helping them to act out in disgusting ways that are way beyond their understanding. So sexually pervert that it's disgusting. This is, you know, porn. It, at its worst, as far as I'm concerned, don't touch children. Don't touch the children. God, if he doesn't come running, we will. <laughs> in all the love that we have, amen, and try, amen, to make sense of some things and rescue, though. It's perverted. Perversion is great. Perversion is great, but it subtly sinks in because the world accepts it. And if we accept it, then we become a part of that lukewarm society. And what did Jesus say in the very end times? The church will be what? Lukewarm. He said, when I return, will I find faith on this earth? Well, I find faithfulness on this earth. This is not okay. And that's why I know people used to get mad at us through the years about how you dress and how you come in and how you go out. You know, because I feel like decency is important. Decency is important. And the way we carry ourselves is important. The way we portray ourselves is important. And so... I feel like it's important for us and it's for, for us to model it, but also to teach our children and our grandchildren these things. Because the world will say, it's okay. And a lot of kids are led into these things early in life so that they become inculcated into this society. You know, with little girls dressing sexually, and, and um, which I can't even say any sexuality, any of that, but if you're a pedophile, you know, dressed in sexually and makeup and big hair and all that kind of crazy stuff, perverted dances and stuff like that. It's just very scary to me. But we need to hold the line. We need to hold the line in Christ, amen? And I know some people won't understand that and some people will think we're crazy. But in the end, the prayers of the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous will prevail, I believe that. Now, I, I look at the whole world. So many people hate our president, and he's just by no means perfect. But I say he, he reminds me of, like, um, you know, like uh, the guy that just keeps walking around and buildings fall behind him and crashes happen to the left and a thousand fall at his right, and he just keeps walking because he is trying to serve the Lord. And even though right now we hear him say, you know why this is all coming against me? Because what I'm doing for you. I was saying this morning in prayer, when he says that I am doing it for him, I think he'll begin to roar when he gets that understanding. He's not just doing things for the Christian church. He's doing things because of the God of the church. Amen? The Lord, the Father. And I believe when he gets that revelation, he'll begin to roar. It's going to be see a difference. It's not going to be, poor me, I'm helping all of you, and this is all coming against me. But he's going to say, this is the word of the Lord. I believe for that. I'm hoping for that. So what happens when people come in? What happens if, if what we've been praying for actually comes to pass? That prodigal children, prodigal children come back to the house of the Lord. Families that fell away come back to the house of the Lord. People who were, you know, found offenses every five minutes come back to the house of the Lord. We're going to believe for healing and transformation and quickly. Amen? Because I feel for us, we have to be aware and be careful of what God is doing. We have to be aware of what God is doing. Yeah, the devil is raging, and it's true. And we're reading about this. This is what's happening in the last days. But what's God doing? And what's his expectation and expectation for us? That we're going to be different. That we're going to carry him. You know, when we sing that song, every time we sing that song, it's your breath. Oh. 
I remember one time Rick Renner did a, uh, a teaching on the DNA of God. I believe it was him. And he blew into a balloon. And he said, what is left all over the lining of that balloon? The DNA of the one who blew into it, amen? And every time I hear that song, I say, Lord, let your DNA live big in me. Let it run through my body and heal the places that need to be healed. I'm believing for divine health. I'm believing for miracles. You know, the Lord has really spoke to my heart through um, a lot of the teachings for this year, that between now and Rosh Hashanah, or I believe between now and the 20th, we're going to see miracles happen in the world and in this church. And I, need, I believe we need to believe for that. We need to believe for that. We need to believe that God is one who can do these things for us and through us. And not because we're anything, but because he is something else. Amen? I was looking up the word miracle just to get it right. I sent myself some attachments. A miracle talks about... Um, when something in the physical world surpasses all known human or natural powers and is described to come from a supernatural cause, such as an effect or event manifesting or considered as a work of God, a wonder, a marvel, a wonderful or surpassing example, a quality, a miracle. Amen? Um, miracle is a phenom phenomenon not explained by known laws of nature. Criteria for classifying an event as a miracle vary. Amen? But it's a surprising and welcome event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws. It is therefore considered a work of divine grace. A high improbable or extraordinary event. An amazing achievement. Something outstanding. That's what I'm believing for. Nothing too big. Amen? I'm believing for big things. For us. I'm believing for people to be so pregnant with vision. And this will be a time of release. We have to believe this together. We have to pray together. Show up for prayer. Thursday night prayer on the phone. Friday night here. Sunday morning back there. And then we're going to just have it all different times. Show up at these solemn prayer assemblies as we repent and pray for our nation. Will you guys pass out communion? Will I just read a few things here? When they come in, this is what the Bible says, Acts 26, to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the dominion of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of their sins and the inheritance among those who have been sanctified by faith. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven. That's pretty powerful. I always tell someone, when you're believing for a miracle, can you open that for me when you come back? When you believe for a miracle, repent first. Make sure you're clean. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you anything. Amen? Not someone who sends you a letter that tells you there's something off. Let Holy Spirit talk to you. I know that from experience. Amen? I had so many people send me accusatory uh, letters in love that, I, that MS came to me because I was in sin somewhere and I had to figure it out. And I thought, boy, you, do, you think that someone who is suffering from a disease doesn't do a whole inventory? <laughs> of course they do. It says here in John, if you forgive the sins of any, their sins will be forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they have been retained. Romans 4, blesses the man whose sin the Lord will not take into account. You know what? The church needs to not take these things into account for people and remind them. If there is one who seeks justice, who seeks truth, then I will pardon them, says the Lord. Listen, we've got to take, uh, take a page out of his playbook here. Jeremiah, they will, um, for I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. Hebrews, for I will be merciful to their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. And their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. There's a theme going on here. I will cleanse them from all iniquity. I will pardon them by which they have sinned, 
against me, by which they have transgressed against me. See, it's all against him, amen? We think sometimes it's about us, but it's about the him and us sometimes that they're mad at. I don't know how many people expect me as a pastor to be perfect. I'm not perfect. I'll never be perfect. I have emotions and feelings and everything just like everybody else. And so you're not always going to get me at the best day, but boy, I do my best and then I rest. Amen? The expectations from people sometimes are too much. But really, they're mad at God, not at you. How blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds have been forgiven and whose sins have been covered. And the repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. Of him all the prophets bear witness that though his name, through his name, everyone who believes will receive what? Forgiveness. We need to be reconcilers with the lost. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. There are so many scriptures that talk about what God wants to do for those who will seek him. And we have to believe that if people come to us, that they're being led by the Spirit. And then it will be our assignment to bring them through to the next steps. I believe a lot of church is going to be taking place in your homes and in the streets and outdoors. I think a lot of church is going to take place in places that are not normally thought of as church. Amen? And so I want you to keep your eyes open and your hearts open to understand that there will be possibilities that may be inconvenient to you that God is going to bring people to you. And consider it a blessing that he trusts you with them. Amen? So this is all made possible because of one who loves us. This is all made possible. You know, who's the one that brought the feast? It was Jesus. Amen? Amen? It's God who brought us into this place of plenty, of delight. That's given us the privilege to pray, to seek his heart, to declare his word over our nation and over ourselves. I'm believing for miracles for people who want children. Miracles in the womb. Amen? I went over to Kathy's one day last month, and I knew her grandchildren would be there, and they were. They weren't supposed to be. And little Layla said to me, she just came up to me, she said she wanted to share a prayer request with me. She wanted me to pray every day for something that she wanted. And I said, oh, I'm going to pray. Amen. I'm going to believe for you, what you asked for. We have to believe for each other, for healing, for divine health, divine grace to be our portion. So, Father, we thank you that on the night that your son, your one unique son, the one who stepped into time, O oh Lord God, and gave up his life for us, Lord, that night, Lord God, he said, do this in remembrance of me. That every time you take this bread, remember what I've done for you. Remember what I gave up for you. Remember how I laid it all down for you, and I want you to do it for others. And so, Father, we take this uh, bread, remembering, remembering, Lord God, that you were scourged, O oh Lord God, that you were beaten for us, O oh Lord God, and that that chastisement brings healing to us, O oh Lord. So I believe for healing from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. I thank you, Lord, that every cell receives the word of healing as we take this communion today. And what does the blood speak of? It speaks of the covenant. It's a new covenant we have, a better covenant we have. The blood speaks of the covenant. The blood speaks of the reconciliation between us and God. It was poured out for us. It's the sacrifice that was made for us so that we would not have to bear the burden of our sin. We're free. We walk free because of what Jesus did. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, that by your blood we've been made free. By your blood we've been redeemed. By your blood we've been reconciled with the Father. By your blood we've been made priests and kings and ambassadors on this earth. By your blood we've been made one in your family, children of God. By your blood the DNA of Christ runs through us. And in his name great things shall we do because we believe, Lord God. 
And so we take this believing and thanking you for what you've done. Father, we thank you. We thank you that eyes open, that ears hear, that, Father God, those who lack in any way will find what they need, O Lord God, that you are the God of prosperity. You are the one who gives us all that we need in every situation, that you cause us, O Lord God, to prosper in every realm, O Lord God. So we thank you, Lord, for divine health, for prosperity in relationships, in finances, Lord God, in jobs, O Lord God, in family, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for divine health in our bodies from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. We thank you for promises realized and dreams, Lord God, coming to pass. Father, we thank more than anything else that your will will be done on this earth through us and that you will be glorified throughout the earth in Jesus' name. Amen, everyone. Just be blessed today. Amen.